Now that we have Bluebeam open, you'll see underneath the left hand side over here, underneath our tool chest, that I already have our general contractor's tools that's loaded. We have fully developed a total of six pallets and there are a number of tools under each pallet for a total of 43 independently predefined tools that you and your employees can use on every single one of your jobs for consistent layout. One reoccurring issue we hear from many of our clients is that they have difficulty enforcing among their employees to use consistent markups for the same object. What I mean by that is one estimator may use a different markup or area takeoff, such as a basic red rectangle with the square footage in the middle, and another estimator may add various color and fills to the markup to make it look differently. However, at the end of the day, both of these may represent flooring takeoffs for the individual estimator. With the Zentech review tools, we put together a collective set of functions that will give you the same output on every single job. So you will be able to distinguish what is what, and you will save the entire process of changing markups and output properties each time. For example, using site layout and the storage and equipment layout, you can simply place the markup over here for any site storage materials, and another person among your team, an estimator or project manager, can also place an area over here and it'll look exactly the same. With that said, let's go over what each of the tools do within the general contractor's toolkit. First, we have basic site layout, which is for storage and equipment and contractor parking. This is useful for making various site layout maps that you could distribute to your subcontractors. We also have some basic erosion control takeoffs such as for an erosion control blanket, silt fence, temporary chain link fencing, snow fencing slash construction fencing, and an erosion control trackpad. One thing you'll notice with all of these is if you open up the columns and markups list, you'll see that they will provide the dimensions and area for all of them. Up next, we have everything regarding office trailers and site trailers. So you can put various trailer sizes and these will come on the plan to scale whatever trailer size you will be using. For the example I just used, this is an eight by 30 office trailer. To double check that, you could always go over to your measurements panel, take a brief measurement and you'll see that this is now 30 feet. These come in all different ranges and sizes anywhere from eight by 20 all the way up to a double wide 24 by 64. And this works on any type of drawing, assuming you already have it set to scale. So I'm going over to this floor plan and I'm going to be placing another 24 by 64 inch trailer. You'll notice that this markup is a lot bigger on this floor plan just due to the nature of the scale versus our civil drawing. Up next, we have a couple of tools within the safety and security aspect. First, we have some basic flooring protection that we can place down, such as if you needed some flooring protection at the main entrance of this building, you could get an entire square footage very easily of everything you need for this. I'm just gonna finish marking this up real quick, make it look a little bit accurate. And now you have that you need a total of 708 square feet of flooring protection. We also have various symbols here, including fire extinguishers that you could place throughout your drawing. Now these could be just used for the simple takeoffs of fire extinguishers or for temporary fire extinguishers for various job sites. We have first aid station. You could place this either over by your trailer 
Or if you have a few of them throughout the project site, you could certainly place them as well. These could be first aid kits, first aid stations, first aid gang boxes, whatever it may be, uh, you could put them on your drawing. Also, if you need a couple of cameras, we have a tool for that as well that does a takeoff and account. So if you need to install some cameras around a building or do a takeoff for final cameras, that's what this tool could be used for as well. Up next, we have all of the simple storage containers. Should you need to be storing anything on your site? These are listed as a count property. And if you want to place a couple of them by the equipment and storage area, for example, we can certainly do that. One useful thing about uh, count functions is you can also change the label of them at any time. Should you want, instead of just calling this an eight by 15 storage container, you can edit this and put this container for only uh, carpet material, for example. So both of these small eight by 15 trailers are both for carpet. Also within our tool chest, we have a set of tools for temporary facilities. We have one for a temporary generator if you need a couple generators around your job site. We have just a temporary power pole or for you know interior build outs. So you could place a couple you know, at strategic locations throughout the job site for wherever a contractor may need to grab power from. We just have a basic utility pole. Should you need to add, you know, a couple utility poles to get power to and from a certain area within your project. We also have portable toilets. A water filling station, and this could be anywhere from a water fountain or it could be an exterior water spigot, for example. Uh, whatever you can find the use for. What we can also do is name a couple of them using our markups list again, such as these two can be for exterior water spigots. And we could add a couple more on the inside wherever they may be a mop sink at. You know, we could have a mop sink right here. For any contractors who need to fill water inside. So we could put mop sink water. We also have just a very simple area takeoff for a wood deck for any trailers or anywhere else you may need a wood deck for. Up next, for our final set of tools within our palette, we have anything regarding waste and recycling. For this one, I'm going back to our civil set of plans real quick. And with these, you could place various size dumpsters throughout, the, throughout your site. Again, these are marked up as account property. We have various uh, dumpster sizes ranging from 10 yard up to 40 yards. Along with anything for a concrete washout, this is a slightly different color. Also for an interior size, we have trash bins that we could place at strategic locations throughout the job site as well. By default, this is just set up to be a 55 gallon trash bin. But as a reminder, using the labels, you can change this from 55 gallon to, you know, a 40 gallon or whatever it may be that suits your need. Now, with all of these tools comes intelligent columns. And what do I mean by this? If I go over to my markups list and I go to my dumpster, for example, we have various column properties we could put in here. By default, for almost all of the dumpsters, they are just set to be general construction debris. However, there is a drop down that includes various other common types of dumpsters, such as for metal recycling, wood recycling, and drywall. 
We also have a various ownership options versus own versus lease. And this goes towards our uh, construction and office trailers as well. By default, this is set up to be a leased office trailer. There's also other columns uh, regarding individual cost and total cost, along with billing duration and billing period. So what we can do with this is assign our office trailer right here, our 24 by 64 office trailer. We could have it a billing period of once a month. We could see who is who's it installed by. Is this a general contractor trailer? Is this a utility company's trailer? Is it a subcontractor's trailer or an owner's trailer? You could also type your own in here. You could type in the cost that this trailer costs per month. So we'll say $5,000. And our job site is going to be going on for 18 months. And this will do a very rough basic math for you for how much a trailer costs for the duration of the project. We can also do the same thing with our temporary toilets down here. If we want to put in a billing period of weekly, an individual cost of 15, so $5 per toilet, and for a duration of 18 months, we could get that rough estimation. One of the final things I'd like to show you regarding our tools is using layers. By default, all of our tools have layers associated with them, and if you're familiar with an AutoCAD or BricsCAD system, it's exactly the same thing. If we go over to our layers panel, you'll see that right now on this floor plan, I have four layers, one for our office trailer, one for everything regarding safety and security. We have temp facilities and waste and recycling. What we can do is turn each of these on and off depending on what we want to see. So by clicking the eye, I'm gonna be disabling anything regarding safety and security. So the flooring protection, the cameras and the fire extinguishers all disappear. If I wanna get rid of the office trailer and temp facilities, now I only have a drawing that contains anything regarding waste and recycling. But I could easily turn all of these back on to have our original drawing. And also, as soon as I place a new tool or markup on our drawing, the layer will automatically be created. So I'm putting just a simple storage container over here. And when I go over to my layers, you'll see that now I have this new layer by default.